وعليكم السلام أقول الله إن الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تبارك وتعالى وغير نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشهد الأمور المعتدلة وأمور المعتدلة بدعة بدعة الملائكة والملائكة والناس بعد دين الإسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I will not take your time I know that you are here to listen to our elder brother. I say to him, elder brother, though I may uh, with the same age of him, but he is our elder brother anyhow. Uh, you know that he is here tonight to lecture us about uh, the Islamic propagation of the Dawah of Islam in the uh, When I heard that, I was offended to. to that he is coming from a far away to teach us here in Britain to speak about the Dawa. So what, what is our job then? We are not doing anything. And I admit that you are doing enough. So anyhow, <laughs> let me start with the citation of the Holy Quran. ومن أحسن قولا من من دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة ادفع بالذي إلى أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم وما يلقاها إلا الذين صبروا وما يلقاها إلا ذو حظ عظيم صدق الله العظيم The procedure of tonight I will hand you over to our brother Shahid Ahmad to say about the formats, the lecture and to introduce our brother though he doesn't need any introduction but I will give him that responsibility. He is stronger than I. He knows all about it better than I. So please, Brother Shahid. Aaj bilal min shaitan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah min fil alamin. Wassalam wassalam wa rasulillah wa salim. Sayyidina wa tabiina wa rasulillah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Amma ba'ad. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On behalf of the World Islamic Propagation Establishment UK, it gives me the greatest pleasure to introduce to you Sheikh Ahmad Didat. Maybe the word introduce isn't quite the right word because I'm sure you all introduced to him. Because Sheikh Didat has been around for a long time and has many fans, of which, alhamdulillah, so many of us are here today. His topic for the day will be Dawah in the UK, telling us how to promote Islam in the best way, because the Quran instructs us that we must call all the way of Allah with wisdom and beautiful preaching. Without much further ado, brothers and sisters, I give to you Sheikh Ahmad Ibad, who will speak to you for one hour, followed by Prophet and Mrs. Auzu billahi min shaitan al-rajim, bismillahi rahman rahim هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا صدق الله صدق الله العظيم. My dear brothers and sisters, I read to you an ayah from the Holy Quran from Surah Fatha. Fatha means victory. The Holy Quran, an encyclopedia of this size, almost 2,000 pages. Where do you find Fatha? Out of 114 surahs, in 2,000 pages, where will you find Surah Fatha? Do you know the easy way to find it? Index. Index, yes. See, this particular volume by Abdullah Yusuf Ali has a very comprehensive index at the back, and the F like a dictionary, look for Fatha, F-A-T-H, Fatha, and it will tell you chapter 48. 48 is easy to find because every page is numbered. And then I tell you ayah number 28, 
Once you found Surah Fatha, chapter 48, verse 28 is also easy to find because every verse is numbered. Once you have found it, what I would like to do, I recommend to all my brethren at all meetings, that when anybody gives you references from the Holy Quran, take the trouble of going and checking up at home. Not that you are doubting the speaker, that the speaker had any, any reason to bluff you, to deceive you. No, just to verify, see it with your own eyes, read it with your own heart and mind, and then look at the commentary. Now it will confirm what you have heard, and that part of that knowledge will become your own property. In other words, you have a fuller grasp. You heard it, now you see it, you read it, you think about it, and now you want to share it with people. So it becomes your own property. So in time, you will see that Allah Ta'ala will fill you up with knowledge that you too will be able to keep on sharing. And one day, inshallah, you too will be able to stand up before people and deliver talks, inspire people, inshallah. So in this ayah, Allah Ta'ala says, he it is, Allah Ta'ala, who has sent his messenger with guidance, Bil Huda, Wadin al Haq and the religion of truth. Li Yuzihirahu Aladdina Kulli that it may prevail, overcome and supersede every other deen, every other way of life. Wakafa billahi shahida and enough is Allah as a witness to this fact that he's going to make his deen to prevail with you or without you. It's a privilege Allah is giving you and me. Rotters that we are. What are we worth really in the sight of Allah? Nothing. Rubbish. But he's given us this rubbish. He's given us that opportunity to do the works of the prophets of God, the messengers of Allah and earn a prophet's reward. It's a privilege Allah is giving us. So now when we read this ayah and Allah is promising us that this deen ul Islam is a deen that is the master, overcome and supersede them all. Kulli! All! Whether it be Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianism, Communism, Judaism, every ism, Islam is destined to master them all. Waqafa billahi shahida. And Allah is a witness to this fact that He is going to make His deen to prevail. And I ask my audiences, do you believe that? Do you believe in it? <coughs> if you don't, you're not a Muslim. Allah says He's going to make His deen to prevail. Over all things, bulldoze them all. Bulldoze them all. Whether it be Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judah, every ism. Islam is in a position to bulldoze them all. That's what He says. You believe it? Let's hear, let's hear, let it be recorded. You believe it? Yes, of course. That's what everybody says. So I'm asking, is that why you sit on your backside doing nothing? No, no, if you had the laser gun, if you had it. You think we'll allow the Jews to beat our brethren, you know, crush our little children, break the bones, you'll allow that? If you had the laser gun, would you allow that? We know we are helpless. We know the position in which we are. We are frustrated. We know we, can, we are helpless people, important people. We can understand. But if you had it, you say, stop it! No, no, stop it straight away! Otherwise, as Russia did in 1956, I don't know whether you remember, 1956, Britain, France and Israel, in, co in collusion, they attacked Egypt. And it was over. It was all over. Three in together, they attacked Egypt. And when we read the newspapers, it is finished. For Egypt, what can you do against Britain, France and Israel? What can you do? Helpless, finish. Russia, for its own reasons, gives an ultimatum. Stop the war now, immediately, or I'm going to rocket bomb Paris and London. I don't know, you see, you people must be young, 56. Most of you are very young, 1956. Look at history. Russia and atheist country, the enemies of Allah, they are threatening France and Britain, if you don't stop the war immediately, I'm going to rocket bomb London and Paris. <laughs> Immediate stop. America said, look, we don't want to get into this trouble. Please, stop it. So they stopped it. Because the guys knew that when Russia says, I'm going to rocket bomb, they can rocket bomb. 
We are not in such a position, so we can talk, 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 but we know we can do nothing. But when Allah tells us that He's given you a deen, that's a master ogre and supersedes them all, bulldoze them all, no armaments are required. You don't need guns, you don't need scud missiles. What you need? The knowledge Allah is giving you. Knowledge, intelligence, intellect. That's all. With the intellect. Because if you had the laser gun, if you had it, you would be disqualified. Because Allah says, like Rafid Din, there is no compulsion in religion. Suppose we had that laser gun. Hmm? We say, well, you Americans, if you don't become Muslim, we'll blot you out of the, from the face of the earth. And suppose you could do it. Does Islam allow you that? No. We tell the Russians, all of you, if you don't become Muslims, we'll obliterate you. Can you do that? No. Why not? Allah says, like Rafid Din. Then how are you going to do it? I say with the intellect. And the enemy seems to realize that. You see, we have to listen to the enemy. At one stage they were talking about two powers, East and West. The communist, communism and capitalism. East and the West. Now communism is out. And the whole world, the media, they are all are focusing, focusing their attention on us. The Muslims, the Muslims, the terrorists, the fundamentalists, the reactionists. We are a backward people, we are looking for trouble, we want to kill people, we want to murder people. This is it, and the whole world is getting programmed. That one day if they incinerate us, they say, well, the guys deserved it. Like the Jews in Germany, and the Hitler. Hitler programmed the Germans, that these are parasites, these are Christ killers, they killed our God, you know, kill the Jews, kill the Jews. And they say that they are incinerated six million Jews. True or false, I'm not worried. The fact is, they say six million Jews were incinerated in the gas chambers. How did it happen? Program. People get programmed. Once you get programmed, this guy's a parasite. Looks, it looks like a terrorist. Everybody looks like a terrorist. Like, I noticed this morning when I came into your Heathrow airport, right, everybody is walking away through the green line. Me too. My son as well. So the guy looks at my son with this kufia on. <laughs> he sniffs something. He calls him. First time now. He calls him. You know why? Because he had this thing on. Mm -hmm. He says, who else is with you? Asking my son. He says, my father. He says, well, your father too. Okay. <laughs> so his father also got this on. <laughs> why, why, why? You know, I'm thinking, why did he do that? You know why? I'm thinking, maybe I'm wrong. Because my son has got this, and our complexion shows we are from the Indo-Pakistan subcontinent, he's a Paki. He's a Paki fellow. You see? Paki fellow, he brings in a lot of drugs. No, maybe he has a reputation. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's also going with two trolley loads full. Maybe he's got something. Right? Who else is with you? So, this guy also travel in gangs, you know? <laughs> so my father, so your father too come. Of course, just a few words. He found out we are from South Africa. You see, immediately his attitude changed. So, no. This is the Tov Blanche fellow, one of these extremist white guys. He was here a couple of days and said, we searched through him and he threatened. So that white guy, that African, he threatened the custom fellow. He said, when you come to my country, I'll do the same to you Britishers. You <laughs> see, that, that's his mentality. <laughs> but however, you see, programming. You get programmed and the whole world, the media is working. They know the dangers. We are a danger to them. We are a danger to the way of life. Not a, we are not a danger to their lives and properties. But at every step the Muslim is going to tell them, this is not right sir, you know, eating the pig is not good, you know, drinking alcohol is not good, dancing promiscuousness is not good. So at every step, you are a challenge to the fellow, his way of life. And now, when a guy like Rushdie comes about, it makes him very happy. So now you see, one of your own now, doing it to you. Huh? You are boasting a lot, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so the guy is getting happy, you know, it satisfies him that look what to do with this guy, so now one of his own is doing it to him. So, the Westerner, he realizes our potency. I read a book, I have it, uh, written by the Christian attacking Islam, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and the Holy Quran, by Dr. Pearson, an American. And this guy says something, you know, from the mouth of enemies, you can get gems. Enemies. If you recognize it, that the guy, what he's telling, he is in hatred. He's talking out of hatred. But there's some truth in what he says. 
And it's actually an asset if you realize it and if you can make use of it. He says, people who worry says, that the nuclear weaponry will fall into the hands of the Arabs one day. This is what the West is worried about. Maybe Libya, nearly Saddam is supposed to have had it. The Western world is worried that one day these Arab fellows are going to get the nuclear bomb. Say so people who worry that nuclear weaponry will fall in one day into the hands of the Arabs fail to realize that the Islamic bomb has been dropped already. It fell the day... Anybody can guess? What, 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 do, you, what do you think he said? When, when did it fall, the Islamic bomb? When did it fall? Huh? He said, the day Muhammad was born. The day, that, that is the Islamic bomb. The Quran. Because without the Quran there is no Muhammad and without Muhammad there is no Quran. So it goes together. The day Muhammad was born. Now when we analyze, man there is a power here. In other words, his teachings, what he brought. There is an atom bomb. But we don't realize its potency. Another guy says, <laughs> a Jewish medical man, writing a book on medicine, research on medicine, history of medicine, in which he gives some credit to the Muslims. At one stage, the Muslims were in the forefront of the sciences. So, there was, so he describes the Muslims. He says, goat herds and camel drivers, these Arabs goat herds and camel drivers sitting on the throne of the Caesars means rulers of Rome Rome, Constantinople East and West, half the known world right, now to him it's like he's, he's trying to hurt you he's sarcastic, but it's true that what Allah did to these goat herds people looking at the sheep and goats, the, the Arabs and camel drivers Allah made them rulers, masters, they go and rule Spain for 800 years Caesars, rulers, kings. So we are listening to the enemy. He said, now let us see what he says. He is an enemy, but now in his venom we might find something that we can utilize and inspire us. So we know that the Jews and the Christians, they have made up their minds. They know. Allah warned us 1400 years ago. He says, that the Jews and the Christians will never, never be satisfied with your Muslims unless you follow their brand of religion. They know you are a danger. You are a challenge. Here's the book. The challenge of Islam in South Africa. Who's a challenge? The Muslim. You are here a challenge. Your fathers came here because after the war, you know, unemployment and the poverty in which we were living in India, Pakistan and maybe the Arab countries. You came here, you know, to do sweep the streets, work in the railway, do all sorts of jobs for a living. And now you got about 500 masjids in the country. Do you know that? 500, you say, this, the second largest religious group in Britain is the, are the Muslims. There are more Muslims in Britain than Methodists. Did you know that? That's what they say. Huh? It's a challenge. And the guys are increasing in numbers. And they are a challenge to the other way of life. And this beautiful masjid of ours, beautiful masjid of ours, you can be proud of it, but they use our masjid. This masjid of ours, look at it. Our masjid. We didn't produce such beautiful pictures, did we? Hmm? Look at it. The World Christian. The title is a Christian magazine called The World Christian, but you have our masjid on the cover. Beautiful. This masjid here, Regent's Park Mosque. <laughs> no, no. Here. A, child, a, a, a Christian response to Islam. What's there in the cover? Your masjid. Regent's Park Mosque. See, they're terrified. They said, look what these guys are doing, man. These beggars, you know, they come from all over the world. And look what they have done, you know, with the help of the Arab oil. Here, another one here. Our Muslim neighbors, actually how to get at you. 
hmm? our masjid. This region is my mosque. Now they they have learned the art. They are master psychologists. They learn the art. They know how to catch fish. See that you, when you come across that, you will take it, you will pick it up. You can't help it, man. Your masjid there. One of the most beautiful masjids in Britain is on the cover and so beautiful picture. So, all right, whatever it is inside, let's take it home. If you're going to read it. They know psychology. They know this fish, what you will bite. So they're using the right bait, trying to catch fish. Look at this. You recognize something? Looks like all Quranic ayahs. Hmm? Islamic calligraphy. We didn't go for human figure, animal figures. You know, in our, uh, our artistry, we didn't go for that. We went in for calligraphy. So they give you calligraphy. If it's given to you or your children, you take it home and put it on the wall. Am I right? Yes. No, no. Let's be honest, man. I will do it myself. I'm telling you. <laughs> but you know what is this? This is Christianity. See, catch your fish. They know this fish will bite. You give it to the Muslim children. <laughs> Jazakallah. Jazakallah. We'll take it home and tell daddy, mommy, everybody will be happy. He says, put it on the wall, my child. Put it on the wall. He says, Abana. Huh? He says, Abana. I says, Abana. So what do you think? Abana. You think, oh, maybe it's Rabbana, Atina, Fid Dunya, Hasanatam, or Fil Akhirati, Hasanatam, Wakin Hazabana. That's what you're thinking. That's how we read. We don't actually see and read. Do you know that? Because the mind reads it. You just see, oh, it says, mm, yes, you know what it is. But when you have a second look, it says, no, it's not what you, what, what you were thinking. It happens again and again. This, this is Abana, it's oh, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. In Arabic! Got your fish. See, they know they have the art. Psychology. They're using psychology to catch us. Then, look at this here. Al Kitab. Al Kitab. If they give you in the streets, won't you pick it up? Outside the masjid here. After Juma. Won't you rush for it? Huh? Somebody's giving these kitabs away. What will you do? Not rush for it? Yes. What is this? This is a Bible course. <laughs> you think Zalikal Kitabu La Reba Fi Hudalil Muttaqeen? Nothing to do with that. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> they caught you fish. Hmm? Uh, we must say Subhanallah. You see? Look at this. What do they say? Allah Muhammad. Huh? Allah Muhammad. Huh? Yes. Uh, first time when I saw it, I read Allah Muhammad. That's what it looks like. Here's the calligraphy is Allah Muhammad. An Arab Sheikh made a mistake. I showed him. I said, look at this, Ya Sheikh. It's Allah Muhammad. I said, have another look, Ya Sheikh. It's Allah Muhammad. I said, Ya Akhi, have another good look. Then he said, Allah Muhabba. An Arab Sheikh took him three efforts to get the thing right. What about my Bangladeshi brothers? And my Pakistani brothers? And my Nigerian brothers? No. And maybe some Arab brothers too. Huh? Look, don't claim that you are, all our people are very educated, you can't, no. And behind it, two year calendar, free. You beggars, wouldn't you like to have it? Huh? This, this is, shh, all this, all this beautiful, all these beautiful stickers, it's all intended for you. All intended for you. Catching fish. <laughs> and I can keep on showing you. Ooh. There's a group of Christians, they call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses. You must have heard that. Unless you're living in an ivory tower where nobody can get to you. <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses, they have a magazine called The Watchtower. You see here it says, 13 million a month. You hearing all right? I said 13 million copies, not of the sheet, of the magazine. 13 million a month they publish this. Another magazine called Awake, same people. 10 million and sub, so many thousand a month. Magazines, not papers like this. That little group of people, they published 84 million copies of this one book in 95 languages, including Arabic and our Urdu and in Zulu. 95 languages, 84.
four million copies in 95 languages. And this book is not a booklet, it's a 192 pages. Can we compete with them? I mean, no, it's not possible. It's not possible. With all our oil wealth and a thousand million in the world, we know we can't compete. With this little group, we can't compete. Let's be honest. No use blaming. Say, well, this guy should do that and that guy should do that and that fellow should. We are always looking for the scapegoat. Maybe genuine, maybe it's to get rid of our frustrations, we have to pass the buck on to somebody. Because of that guy, we are in this position. Because of that fellow, we are in this position. But the fact is, no man who is in power, we are a thousand million. <laughs> they are boasting, I'm going to Nigeria tomorrow, by the way. I wrote this book a few years ago, 1976, in the Watchtower magazine. They're telling us here that the biggest number of Jehovah's Witnesses outside the United States, it started in America, this movement, about a hundred years ago. Now they start all over the world. They're working, they did one book in 95 different languages. Now, they are boasting that the largest number of Jehovah's Witnesses outside the United States is the Muslim country of Nigeria. Why should they lie? They say we have 112, at 1976, 112,000 active workers in Nigeria. The whole Muslim world put together, I don't know, I don't think if you can get a thousand, two thousand. Dais, propagators. I don't think so. These are the Dais, active workers. 112,000 active workers in Nigeria alone. Can we compete with them? Not likely. See, you feel now, you feel, now let's find a scapegoat. <laughs> Who's responsible for all this? So you say the Molvi Sahib is that, and the chef is like that, and the, <laughs> the, the rulers are like this. Very, very easy. We can pass the buck. Look, find a scapegoat and relax. You know, until that guy comes right, there's nothing we can do. Unless that guy comes right, nothing we can do. This is the sickness we have got. And I can tell you that we, you and I, we can do things. Which all those billions of our petrol dollars can't do, you and I can do. I'll show you just now. How you and I can do things which I tell you the whole Muslim world put together can't do. This is a little group that's gathered here tonight. What you and I can do, I'll show you. There's so many here, but now let me show you something big. The Christians are giving out this beautiful book, No Greater Love. Everybody wants to read about love and romance. No? Huh? Even old people like me. I can't tell you, I have no, I have no interest anymore in the subject. I'm lying to you. You know, if I get a book like this, Love and Romance, I say, right, let's see. <laughs> this is man, any man. That's how Allah made us. Right? So they send this to you by post. They get your addresses. They send it to you. Very happy. You open the book. You know what's inside? What's inside? Bible. The Holy Bible. Jesus. Bible! They've got you. You go to Hong Kong, they give you this. Good news for visitors. So you think, yeah, about the Gisha girls and massage parlors and what and what not. Let's see what I can see in Hong Kong, right? Huh? Good news for visitors. Look at that. Hong Kong. What's inside? Holy Bible. Bible. In Chinese and in English. Kochu, fish again. Now the latest. You know, last time when I came, there was no place here. You know why? Last meeting that I had here, there was no place. You know that? It was chocolate block. You know why? Huh? What was the subject? Mother of all. Um, no, what was it? Mother of all. Mother of all injustice. Right! It tickled off straight away. It said, right! It'll be about something about Saddam and something about the Saudis. Shh! Chocolate block. And I was sweating like hell. Not because of you all, but it was hot in there. And the ladies were packed up in both those halls and that side there. And there was no place anywhere. It's a topical subject. 
Just before leaving, a court case took place in Durban. Somebody was charged for fraud. And the judge, when he passes judgment, he says, mother of all frauds. <laughs> fraud. <laughs> you just can't help it, man. You keep on picking up something that is in current. You want to use it again and again and again. Saddam made it famous. Actually, it's in the Quran. See? Ummul Qura, mother of all cities. Makkah Mukarramah. See? That's Ummul Qura. It's in the Quran. So that guy used it for mother of all battles and then mother of all fiascos and mother of all everything and mother of all injustices and mother of all frauds. Shh! It's, 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 it's got currency now. So Desert Storm has a quite currency. Desert Storm. Wouldn't you like to read it? What is it all about? You know in your heart and mind what it will be about. About the Gulf War. Hmm? You know, Saddam's cut missiles and the anti patriot missiles of the Americans. You know how they counteracted the skies and how they got Saddam out of Kuwait, how they got the half a million soldiers there in the desert. Yeah, yeah, that, what else you expect to read? And you want to know, don't you want to know? Yes. Yes, and free. Won't you take it with a kiss? Huh? <laughs> and the American stamp, stamp of the American Army, Navy, Air Force. Army, Navy, Air Force, with the camouflage uni uniform of the American soldier. Bakshish. 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 Huh? Would you like to have it, Yasha? <laughs> you open it. The Good News Bible. They got you again. They got you again. Look, there are masters. Wallah, they are masters. They are masters at the game. They are master psychologists. They are in the field. You see, they can make all these discoveries because they are in the field. All these new venues, any opportunity, nothing goes by. This fish will bite this now, it's right. This, this is current news, buy. This is the current bait. He'll take this as a bite. Catch, catch, catch. Islam unveiled. The true desert storm. See? Here's another book, just come out from America. What does it say? This is the true desert storm. And you read inside, it makes your heart bleed. Allah. It makes it hurts you. The, I don't want to repeat it. Rushdi is nothing compared to this piggy. Rushdi is nothing. You want me to make this guy famous? You want to make him famous? Do you want to make him famous? No. 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 Very easy. We march. Tomorrow, you know, and we can rouse people tomorrow, Yom al Juma, I'll give you the quotations from here and rouse the people here in the masjid. They say, we're going to march on to Parliament House. And 10,000 will march. Yes, yes, because if I read to you what the guys, the khabis, the swine, what he says about our Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I don't repeat those words. It will move you, moves anybody. It's right. And the answer is to come out on the, onto the American Embassy. See, this is an American, came from America. The American has published this. Let's, let's march. And do you know it's easier to march? I'm not belittling for what you have done in the past. But 10,000 people, it's easier for 10,000 10, people to march. It's easier because mass psychology, mass hysteria. If you are in it, you worked up. You are prepared to die because 10,000 are going to die. You see, you're not alone. But you individually, one by one, he said, look, brother, are you prepared to do something? He said, yes. You want to protest? He said, yes. So I'll show you how to protest. But I want you. I don't want 10,000. I want you. I want you individually. Can you stand in a street corner? With a smile on your face? Can you smile? With a smile on your face? No, man. <laughs> a contrived smile. You're not smiling inside, but now, come on, come on, man. Force yourself, smile, smile. <laughs> and can you say Happy Christmas and give it to people? Happy Christmas, Happy New Year. Can you do that? Yes. No, no, man, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> that, as that, it takes greater courage. You stand alone in the street corners, Piccadilly Square, Oxford Circus, around there, half a dozen, dozen people, with a thousand each, everybody passes, good morning, happy Christmas, happy New Year, happy Christmas, happy New Year. That takes more courage, it takes more manliness in you, than 10,000 of us, we're going to march on to Parliament House. Now you tell me, now if I'm wrong, I want you to correct me. 
alone, you stand there with a smile in your face. Happy Christmas, Happy New Year. Now, I want to teach you that. Look, we can't fight. The way if you're going to march 10,000, they're going to make another mockery of us. <laughs> the goats are out again. <laughs> Ready for another slaughter. Right? And everybody says, hey, these guys, we know they're troublemakers. They are these bloody reactionists. They are the fundamentalists. These are the terrorists. We innocent people, harmless people, marching with Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, and now it terrifies the 60 million Britishers. He says, now these guys are all troublemakers. I said, no, you don't do that. There's a storm. I said, right. Here's a book. You got it. Everybody got it. If you haven't got it, you must get it before you go. Desert storm. We are only saying, adding to that, the Christian desert storm, has it ended? That's our words. Desert storm, I copied it from here. The uniform, I got it from here. The title, I got it from here. I'm only learning from the enemy. That's all. No, no, this is... You can't, you can't go and invent all these ideas. Well, like all this, what I'm doing, if you say, Mr. Dizal, is very good. This is very good. Where did you get this idea? I said, I got it from the enemy. Not really. Because I'm studying that fellow. I said, look, I don't have to start, say, inventing the wheel from scratch. That guy has invented the wheel and the, what you call jet planes and all that. Let me buy from him. Let me copy from him and get on from there. I want to start inventing from scratch. I'm a fool because I'll never be able to catch up with him and the whole Muslim world. We can't catch up with the guy. Do you know that? In technology, we can never catch up with the American or the British or the French. Look, admit it. Because as soon as we reach where we have reached, they'll be miles ahead of us again. We can't catch up with the fellow. The only way, what we can do is to conquer him. Make him our own. Make him our slave. And that you can do intellectually. With a gun, like Rafi Din, even if you had it. So do it with the intellect, man. Learn to use your intellect. It's hard. A Greek philosopher, he said, he said, if you want to make a man to hate you, make him think. Make him think. Create a problem for him. Make him think. He'll hate you. Make him think. Otherwise, we are like sheep and goats. We can follow. Come on, march. Says, march. You don't have to think. March. Now, you stand there, you're thinking. <laughs> what will, how will the guy react? You know, he might come and question me. He might want to fist fight with me. What, what? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That takes some, some doing. So, we said, now, they have done this. They have got a, thrown a big stone at us. Giving it to the Muslims. In Pakistan, in the Arab countries, in Africa. Desert storm. <laughs> Desert storm. And people are grabbing it. I said, right. Same idea. Desert storm. Has it ended? But we are not as deceitful as they are. They are deceiving people. Because inside their Bibles, we put down here, Christ in Islam by Ahmad Didat. It's there. I know the guy hasn't got time to read. That's not my funeral. See, when you give. Good morning, madam. Good morning, sir. Happy Christmas. Happy New Year. Say, thank you. Thank you. Allah. He said, thank you very much. Thank you very much. He's got no time to read Christ in Islam by Ahmad Didat. Nobody has got the time to read that. No, no, I'm telling you. But he'll thank you profusely. Yes? Desert storm. They will know something about desert storm. Right? He or she goes home and starts. On the cover, we tell you what the whole story is about. Not just deceiving people. No, we explain to you what is the connection between desert storm and this book. This book is about Christ in Islam. That's the original title. But in a new uniform, I know there are things that they have done, old books, very good books. The sales fell, 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 fell. They gave a new title and they sell again, top seller, best seller. Just the title, change the title, best seller. So right, we had Christ in Islam, Christ in Islam, maybe mm, Islam, mm, mm, something, you know. The guy wanted to catch his fish. So, no, okay, now he would prefer to have desert storm, so right? Desert storm, has it ended? Everybody will take it from you with gratitude. Allah. Muslim, non-Muslim, Jew, Christian, Hindu, anybody, everybody you give. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let them take it home. And we explain now, what is the connection? What is the connection between this book and Desert Storm? They do nothing of the kind. They deceived you, they got the Bible into the house. Now we tell you, here. Once more, you can read it inside the front cover. Front cover, open, open all, the front cover. Front cover, the first item there. 
front cover, the first item. Once more, you got it? Once more, the plans of a dictator have been dashed. Dashed in the desert sand with the loss of hundreds of thousands of lives. Desert storm will be remembered by those involved for years to come. But it is not the first desert storm. A storm has been raging in the desert for more than 2,000 years over a man called Jesus, peace be upon him, and his mission. Disputes concerning the nature of Christ have deluded the earth with the blood of millions of people since his birth. Matthew 2.16 What then is the Muslim standpoint regarding the, pers the personality of the Prince of Peace, Jesus? Read on. Right. You don't want to read? Tear it and throw it away? That's his business. Want to burn it? Okay. We have done the job. We got the thing into his hand and we got it into his house and we made him to read. He doesn't want to read any further? Not our funeral. That's his funeral. Her funeral. Now, my dear brothers, are you prepared to do this job? I want to know now. She's very nice. I, I'm entertaining you people. I know people get entertained. Every time I speak, they get entertained. They love to listen to me. Even if I talk nonsense, you'll enjoy it. I know that. <laughs> so now, I said, I want you to tell me. I'm glad there's not thousands here. Sure people. And I can see almost everybody is young, 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 young people. Soldiers. And future lies in your hands. Not old people like me. We are right. We are on the way out. Sheikh Zahran and Ahmad Didat are here on the way out. You are the soldiers of Islam. Have you got the guts? I want to know. You got the guts to go and give this to the people in the streets. I have printed half a million copies. Yes. Sure. Yes. 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 Put up your hand, please. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah. With a smile. We must smile. That's it. It's harder. You know when you can smile. You see when you got the laser gun. Somebody wants to pick up a fight with you. I'm a black belt karate expert. And another old guy comes along and wants to put up with me. I'll be smiling all the time. You know that? Uh, even you young guys. <laughs> even you young fellows. <laughs> because I have done certain things. I have done boxing, wrestling, judo. Right. So you come along. If you're not a trained man, if you're trained, it's different. But other, if you're not a trained person, you're young, strong and all that. But I know I'll have the better of you. So I'll just smile. You st you'll be terrified. You say, this old man is not getting frightened, man. He's smiling. Maybe he's got a six shooter. <laughs> no, no six shooter. Nothing. I know the back of the mind. If you are an ordinary person, I know what I can do to you. You see, you can't get the better. If you give me one, I'll give you two. Huh? So I know. So I'll smile at you. Say, yes, yes, my son. Yeah. You say, what's wrong with this old man? <laughs> is he mad? <laughs> no, he's not mad. He knows. Similarly, you know there's something behind you. Huck. And this is not offensive. We are not looking for trouble. We are not brawlers looking for trouble. We just want to do our master's job. We want to educate the people. Right. I printed half a million. The original idea was half a million in the streets of New York. In the city of New York. This was the exercise. And I went to Saudi Arabia and I wanted the young men to volunteer. I said, I don't want your money. I want you, not with this Arab guard, in incognito with your, your t-shirts and your blue denim. Come to New York at your own expense and put up in a hotel at your own expense. I will tell you when to come and for every one Saudi, I'll give you four Afro-American brothers. Go on, start in the street corners and Happy Christmas, Happy New Year. Can you do it? Yes. No, they said yes. That's right. That I'll take them to America. But no sense in bringing them here. I've got so many of my soldiers here. I want to organize this. Yes. Inshallah, I want to organize this yes. through wipe. I want to come myself when we do that. The books are already here. These are the samples. If you want to change your mind, read it at home and you think, no, 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 this is too dangerous. Okay, you can back out. <laughs> <laughs> but inshallah, you'll find, you'll enjoy it. So look, man, let's deliver the message. What is Jesus Christ in the house of Islam? He is not God. And it answers so many of your problems. At question time, if something comes along, I'll show you how this book answers it. So, this was the main mission, that we want to give this out. Then, I say, I want five million books of this. In every city in Britain. Then we get volunteers in Bradford, say, can you give half a million men, or 100,000, 100,000 in Birmingham. And, come on, man, another million here in London, a city of 10 million people, can't we give out a million copies? Blitzkrieg. You know what Hitler did? Blitzkrieg. And, so, invasion. Mass attack. 
This is like the little pebble that Hazrat Dawud al Islam picked up. That guy is throwing a big stone. It's costly business. We, this is also costly, but it costs us a fraction of that. Right? It costs us a fraction of that. And these are the little pebbles which can crack the skull of the Jalut, the Goliath. Jalut, the Goliath. You see, we can't fight him. We know we haven't got the laser gun. We haven't got the scud missiles. Let's not, you know, wish for that. We got this little pebble what Dawud al Islam had. What did he have? Do you know the story? Waqatala Dawud Jaluta wa tahullahul mulka wal hikmata wa allamu mimayasha. There was a conflict between the Palestinians and the Jews going on for 3,000 years. At one stage in that conflict, the Palestinians had Goliath, Jalut. An eight-foot giant in their midst. And when you have an eight-foot giant, like Primo Canera or somebody, you know, you know, you feel proud, you know, you're okay now. When anybody comes along, this big brother will do the job. See? So the Palestinians are on one hill and the, the Jews on the opposite hill. And this Jalut is shouting, Say, hey, you Jews! Is there anybody there who will take me on? I'll chew you alive. And while he's shouting, He's tottering. He's an abnormal. Eight foot giant is not normal. On rough ground, and you know, you're swaying, he says, hey, you Jews, you know, I'll kill you, I'll do this. <laughs> Generally, you're doing like that all the time. So, this Jalut is doing that. And the Jews were shivering in their pants. I don't know whether they used to wear pants those days. But, metaphorically, they were shivering in their pants. Nobody prepared to take them on. And they know, if this guy gets them, he can crush them. Just like that. Ah, and there is little Dawood, Dawood al -Salam. He was no prophet then. He was a shepherd boy. He's looking after his father's sheep. And he sees this giant tottering. Yo, Jews! And him. He says, man, that guy is a clumsy fellow. Clumsy, slovenly. You know, he is a sitting target, duck, sitting duck. You know, you can shoot him if you had a situation. Duck! Easy to get him, man. So he comes to Talut, Saul the commander, the Jewish commander, and says, look, sir, I will take that guy on. So what? You! Go and look after your father's sheep. Go and look after your father's sheep. We veterans of so many wars, we can't take him on, we are terrified of him, and you want to fight him? He says, sir, you don't understand. You know, <laughs> please, man, give me a break. I tell you what I can do to that fellow. His enthusiasm is so overpowering. The Talmud says, okay, okay, you want to commit suicide? Here's my sword and my shield. So little Dawood says, sir, I don't know how to use this. I never use it in my life. And maybe it's too heavy for him, the sword. He's still a shepherd boy. I'm going to fight him with my sling. Sling. You know, they didn't have the rubber those days. So the sling was a small pouch with two strings. You see some pictures about our Palestinian children. You know, using that type of thing with a pouch and two strings. You put a stone in the pouch and you swing, gaining momentum. And at the right moment, you let one side go, and the missile, the stone, flies. He has been used to killing rabbits with that, killing birds with that. He's a marksman, good marksman with that. So he said, "I will fight him with my sling." Big joke. With a toy, you want to kill a giant with a toy? He said, "Sir, please, you don't understand. You know what I can do with this." All right, he says, man, you want to commit suicide? Go. Maro. Get the Maro. <laughs> Die. So he walks down the hill, and the others are watching. That little fellow coming down the hill now. He's alone. What has he got? Nothing. He seems to have some string in his hand. And he, at, the, at the bottom of the valley, in the stream there, he bends down and picks up a few stones. They're watching. Fun. <laughs> what is this? And he's coming up. He's coming up. Can you imagine, sir? What a bloody joke, man! We are that doubt, I'm telling you. You are that doubt. See, we forget that. He's coming up. And he comes to the right distance, he knows. He stands. And he puts a stone and he starts swinging. <laughs> They're laughing. The Palestinians are laughing. <laughs> Look at him! And at the right moment, he lets go. He has been a good marksman. He had plenty of practice. 
So he strikes Jalut on the forehead, cracks his skull, the guy falls. Little Dawood rushes up, takes his own sword and chops off his head. So Allah says, وَقَتَلَ دَاوُدُ جَالُوتَ And Dawood killed Jalut. وَأَتَاهُ اللَّهُ الْمُلْكَ And Allah gave him dominion, وَالْحِكْمَةَ And wisdom, وَعَلَّمُهُ مِمَّا يَشَا And whatever else he will. Little Dawood killed Jalut. You are, each and every one of us are those Dawoods. This is that pebble. You start with this, the next move will be a million for London. But try with 100,000. We'll plan a strategy. We'll let you know on the moss board. Please, my brothers, please. You know, come on. Let's go about half a dozen in each of those squares, what you call circus. You know, Piccadilly Circus and whatever, Oxford Circus and whatever circus and circus and, you know, Regent's Park or whatever, what not. You know, all right. One Saturday morning. Saturday morning up to one o'clock, man, give, man, give, give, man, give. Next day in Hyde Park, give, give, give. And if there's any balance left, leave it, leave it over. Right, but finish them up. Blitzkrieg. Then we come back again, so we have done the exercise, I did it in America, I'm going to do that. See? Did it here, I said, right now, we want to cover the whole of Britain. I won't take you, everywhere, get the people involved. You again in London, then I want to teach you people a survival course. These Christians are coming and making mess, mess out of us. Survival course. And you know how long that course is? One sitting. At the most three hours. Start at 10 in the morning, one o'clock finish. A survival course. I'll give you people a survival course. How to fight the missionary. How you can slaughter him. The Kung Fu. The Kung Fu of comparative religion. I haven't done it yet. Reason? Because it's a bit too sensitive. I'm, when I talk to the general public, I have to speak nice, beautiful, sweet, flowery words. There I need men, men, men. Who are not bashful men. Who get, you know, when I say, so use some word, you know, your ear goes red. No, no, you're not the right guy for that. Somebody with stamina. Right. Only thing I want to do is, you'll notice what I do to you. Mm. I was cut in his eye. We'll read the Bible. This is the scud. I'm telling you, use the scud. This is the enemy's scud. Use this scud against him. There is no better way to fight the enemy than with his own weapons. Our Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Al-Hirbu Khit'un. It's a worry strategy. And strategy demands that you use the weapons of your enemy. Justice. And this is the primer for that bomb. This is the primer. I just finished writing it. I'll have to publish this by tens of thousands. Printed. It's not printed yet, it's just type. This is actually the primer. To prime that scud. How to use that scud against a Christian. Three hours time, I set you on the road. Then you become your own. You, you, you have that AK-47 or the, how to shoot the scud missiles. Man, then you'll be itching for Christians to come to your house. This is not for ordinary Christians. They are your friends. Your fellow workers. Your boss. Your employer. Talk to them nicely. I'll show you how to talk to them. Christ and Islam. Talk about that. But the Bible says about Muhammad, talk about that. Muhammad, the natural successor to Christ, talk about that. Muhammad, the gracious, talk about that. This is special. It will be out of bound for the ladies, not for the ladies. Only for men, and I prefer young men under 30, but everybody says he's young, so I can't help it. Sheikh, <laughs> Sheikh Zahran says, you know, I'm young in spirit, I can't refuse, but I would prefer, you know, 30 years and under. People who have the guts and stamina to do the job. So that will be the next move, inshallah. This, 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 don't, don't look at this. This is that little stone Dawud al Islam picked up. That's a little stone Dawud al Islam picked up. Go and crack the skull of the Jalut and pleasantly, man. Nobody will hurt you. Wallah, nobody will hurt you. Nobody will touch you. Nobody will punch you. With that, nobody will. With that smile on your face. Good morning, madam. Good afternoon, sir. Good morning, sir. Happy Christmas. Happy New Year. Wa akhirud da'wana. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much for the God for a very stimulating lecture. And I'm sure it's worth enough for all of us Muslims to know that we have a big responsibility on our shoulders to share the God's enlightenment for us. Now is the chance for you to put questions to share the God. Please make a cue at this microphone here, and there's a few brief rules that we will follow. Questions will only relate to the topic theme. As you can see, Chef Nidal is quite old now, although he says he's very fit, but I know he's been traveling, he's tired. So please limit your questions to the title of the topic only. Ask one question at a time. If you have more than one question, ask your first question and go back to the end of the queue. 
please. Can we have the first question? If the ladies have any questions, they're welcome to write them down and pass them through. Can we have the gents form the queue before we start questions, please? Is, is the mic working? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Right. Assalamu alaikum. I want to ask you about the situation in Bosnia. How is the situation among the Islam? This is my question. Brother, I must confess. I'm also wanting somebody to explain to me the Serbians, the Bosnians, and the Yugoslavians, what is involved there. Wallah, I myself, I haven't got a clear picture of what is happening there. Who's fighting who, we keep on reading about the Muslims there, but which part are Muslims and the Croats and what, I have no real knowledge. I'll be just guessing, shooting, and I'll make a fool of myself. I, this is not my speciality. We all should know, but I have got no knowledge on the problem that you have asked. Uh, I would like to tell you that there are many Christians who know about Islam. They know that the Quran is the last revelation. They know that Muhammad وسلم, is the last prophet. They know that Islam is the truth. Yet, they don't want to admit it. They don't want to believe it. Can you tell us please what are the reasons that which makes them be far from reading Islam and knowing it better. Jazakumullah khair. The brother wants to know, you see there are people, there are people, they say that Islam is a good religion, the Prophet ﷺ was a good man, sincere man, the Quran is a fantastic book, Islam's teachings are very good, very helpful, and yet they will not accept Islam. What could be the reason? You see, it's a matter of programming, brainwashing. The Christian and the Jew, they are both programmed. They are programmed to think that they are going to go to heaven. The Jews, God chose them. They are a chosen people and I said, they are the children of God. All these others are like his step, God's stepchildren. So, now my, my son is a rotter. My son is a rotter. You are a saint. But who will get my inheritance? My son, not you. I like you. Very good boy, pray five times a day, Tahajjud Guzar, he's a, he's a perfect Muslim. But who will get my inheritance? The rotter son of mine. Am I right? He's my son, my flesh and blood, he's going to get my inheritance. So similarly the Jews are thinking, they are the children of God. And as such, no mind what rotters they are, but they will go to heaven. The Christian also the same. They are programmed that no mind what, how beastly they are, they're going to go to heaven. And Allah tells us that in the Holy Quran, Sawaqalu and they say, Lan al Jannata illa man kana hudan al nasara. That you Muslims will never, never enter Jannah. There's no heaven for you unless you become a Jew or unless you become a Christian. That's programming. Once you are programmed, the guy admits you are a good person, your way of life is good, everything, but you haven't got salvation. There's no heaven for you. So this is the problem. Now you have to find out, you have to deal with that sickness, which we are not dealing. So on the face of it, I'm telling you, man, we say don't touch alcohol. Look at your father is a drunkard, your brother-in-law is a drunkard, and your son-in-law is a drunkard. Look at the mess, misery all around. See, yeah, yeah, it's true. But you got no salvation. There's no heaven for you. Right? That, so that gives him satisfaction. Now how to deal with that? In other words, that is the difference type of brainwashing. That guy is brainwashed, you have to reprogram him. He's programmed, you have to reprogram him. Now you need the right material for that and you need patience and perseverance for that. It's not like one sitting, I make the guy speechless, you know, I made dreams around him and I'm satisfied, I'm happy. You know, Christian fellow came and I silenced him. That's not it, man. It doesn't should. Anytime any Christian comes to your door, Make him welcome. Sit down. What's your name, please? Your address? Your telephone number? He doesn't want to? Says, gone. Foot sack. Get out. You're bloody rubbish. <laughs> you want to come into my house? You want to enjoy my hospitality? And you, are, you are, don't want to give me your name, your address? I don't want to know you. Get out. Push him out. Once you have got his name and address and his telephone number, now talk. 
and you might have made a crack in his egg. Now what do you do? You satisfy, no, 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 go and follow him up. You go to his house now. Go and pester the life out of him. Because if he made a crack in you, he'll never let you go until you're converted. Do you know that? Until you're baptized. Damn it all, why should you be just satisfied with just making a crack? No, no, no. It must be a complete change. Until one day he tells you, say, I don't want you to darken my door again. The next time you come here, I'll put a bullet through you. Then you say, as Allah tells us in the Quran, Then you meet the ignorant and you say peace. But otherwise, you make a, his life miserable. He wanted to make it to you. Take his name and address down, his telephone number down. Now talk. And follow it up. Okay, so we have to persevere. It's not just a lifetime of programming. In one hour you think, why didn't you do the job? He, you know, I, I tied him up, I tied him up, I tied him up. Why doesn't he accept Islam? No, it's not that easy. Lifetime of programming. You have to persevere longer. Yes, my son. Yes. Uh, I want to make three points to you, brother. First of all, uh, my point is... Uh, Please, said, speak in the mic, yeah. Speak in the mic, speak in the mic, yes. You said that the... Uh, huh? That's not a PA system, Mike. But if he speaks in the mic, yes. That we should learn from the masters, the kafirs. First of all, they're not masters, they're evil-minded. And we don't need to learn from the enemy, we have the Quran. We don't need... You know, this I, when I tell you in the class, I'll describe this in the language befitting. This book here. I can't use the language here now. Right? Why the hell must we use this? When we have got the Quran? But I said, look, that's what Allah tells you. So the reason why you are not doing the job, why you can't do the job, we haven't done the job, is because you don't know what, any, what weapon the enemy is carrying. Every time we get a beating in the Middle East from the Jews, you know why? Because we don't know what he's armed with. He's better armed than us. The American is better armed, better informed than us. That's all. He's not a superman. He didn't come from heaven. So to fight the enemy, you must know his weapons. And Allah is telling you, the ayah I quoted you, وَقَالُوا لَنْ يَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةَ إِلَّا مَنْ كَانَ هُدًا أَوْ نَصَارَ They say that you Muslims will never, never enter Jannah. There's no heaven for you. Unless you become a Jew or unless you become a Christian. In answer to that, Allah says, Tilka amani yuhum, that this is the wishful thinking, vain desires, hallucination. They're just babbling, babbling. Don't get frightened. Qul! Tell them. Ha tu burhanakum. You understand Arabic? MashaAllah. Qul, tell them. Ha tu burhanakum. Produce your proof, your certificate, your diploma that entitles you to Jannah and destines us to Jahannam. Let us have a look at your certificate. Does Allah tell you that? Qul say ha tu burhanakum. Burhan proof, produce your proof. So the guy produced it. Here's my proof. He said, my Bible says this, my Bible says that. My Bible says this, my Bible says that. He said, no, the Bible is not the word of God. So he said, the Quran is not the word of God. He said, this is fabricated. He said, the Quran is fabricated. Where will you come to? A punch up. I said, I can't afford that. See, judo, this is judo, intellectual judo. You know judo? Hmm? This is intellectual judo. He said, come on man, let's see, what have you got? In any claim, anybody makes any claim, at any time, ask him for his proof. Kul hatu burhan. It's the most sensible, common sense thing to do. Did you ask him for his burhan? The Christian, in a thousand years. You didn't. There are 10 million Christians in Egypt. Do you know that? Arab Christians. 10 million. There are 5 million others, 15 million Arab Christians in the world. Did you ask him for his burhan? In a thousand years. He said Christ died for his sins. Am I right? Jesus is God and the begotten Son of God. Did you ask him for his burhan? When I say you, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about our learned men, the Muslim world. Did you ask the Jew for his burhan? Did you ask the Christian for his burhan? Allah is telling you, ask him for his burhan. Simple! Elementary statement. Ha tu burhan. That guy is not interested in your Quran. No, there is a type of people. Allah says, min humul minuna. There are good people among them. Wa aksar humul fasikun. The good people talk about the Quran, talk about Islam, the hygiene, our laws, brotherhood, sobriety. 
Beautiful. It will do, do your job. But the, we say, أَكْثَرُهُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ But the majority of them are perverted transgressors. You going to use the Quran? Jesus says, do not throw that which is holy into dogs. Do not throw pearls before swine. That's what you're doing. To the dogs and the pigs, you don't put zam zam water. <laughs> they need fire. See, my father told me, he says, my son, when you fight the devil, you don't, don't fight him with zam zam water. You can't subdue shaitan with zam zam water. I don't know what idea you have about zam zam water. You think you can make shaitan into a, a saint? <coughs> with zam zam water? You dip him and take him out? No. My father said, burn him with fire. Fire! You have to burn shaitan with fire. So now I teach you how to fight with fire. This is that. His own, use it against him and you see how easy. Tantalizing, pleasurable. Wallah, he has come with it under his arm. You just tell him, he wants to, he's asking you questions now. He said, what this last day, the kingdom of God established, where? What does the Quran say? Where? He's asking you, he's asking you. Where will the kingdom of God be established? Where? On this earth or in heaven? Where? Bulk of us, bulk of us, Wallah. We haven't done the reading. One third of the Quran speaks about heaven, hell and hereafter. Did you know that? No, no, hardly anybody knows. One third of the Quran speaks about heaven, hell and hereafter. One third. How many of us know? Look, we haven't read it ourselves. We haven't. I haven't. Well, see, I'm only reading what I need. We say what I need. You create a need, a problem for me, I'm looking for a solution. Then I come and give it to you. I don't know the whole Quran. I don't know who knows the whole Quran. You go and ask a brother, say, look, what does the Quran say? Now the Christian is asking you that. He's got a Bible under his arm. He's prepared now, he's read your book. He's asking you, he's asking you, what does the Quran say? Where will the, the heaven be established? He said, what does the Quran say? So, uh, you can't say, go and see my Sheikh, Sheikh Zahran. Will you say that? No, it's not befitting. Go and see Mr. Didat. Will you say that? Not befitting. You want to give battle. Huh? You want to give everybody. I'm talking when I say you, I'm talking about all of us. You want to give battle, you have no knowledge. So now I have to teach you, I said, no, my son, that guy is a black belt karate expert. He's trained to come along and ask you these questions. Now, if you play the game according to his rules, you'll come out second best. Now, what you have to do, you have to turn the tables. So I tell you, I says, my son, you see what you do? Tell him, confess, man, confess. Then look, my brother, friend, I know very little about the Quran. I'm ashamed of myself. I'm a Muslim, born Muslim. But there's hardly anything I know about the Quran. Admit it, all of us. But you know your Bible. Say yes. You know your Bible. Say yes. If you say no, then it's a foot sack. Get away, man, you bloody rubbish. You don't know your own Bible and you talk about the Quran? Get away! <laughs> he's got to say yes because he's got Bible under his arm. He's come along to push it down your throat. He say, you know something about your Bible? Say yes. He says, can I have a look at it? Is that a Bible? Say yes. He gives it to you. And I'll show you the primer, how to prime this. You have primed it. You just open up. I'll show you what to do. How to mark it, highlight it. You have done that. Not his Bible, in your Bible you've done it. You know where what is there. It's right. Open up Genesis chapter 19. Open Genesis chapter 19, verse 30. Read! That's how you do the job. Open Genesis chapter 35, verse 22. Read! Your book, you explain to me. You explain. That guy will never darken your door. <laughs> you see, so, number one, we have to use this rubbish. You know, to fight him. You can't fight the devil with holy water. Um, brother, I'd just like to know why the disbelievers, they don't, they hate Muslims. I'm talking about either Jews or Christians. They hate Muslims. We're not, it's classical and ordinary question. Um, worse than that, they know about Dawah, they know about everything, but they just they don't want to know nothing. They don't want to hear nothing from they us. Hate us. They don't want to listen nothing. We talk to them, we explain to them. We're not asking them for their money or their fortune or nothing at all. Just asking to show them, but they just close their ears and... No, you see, we are coming at cross purposes, let's say with the Christians. He says sin is inherited. 
We say no, sin is not inherited. Sin is acquired. From the word, from the word go, we are now a tug of war. He says sin is inherited. Everybody is a sinner. Everybody goes to hell. Unless you believe that Christ died for your sins. So number one, we say no, sin is not inherited. Right? Number two, he says Jesus is God. We say no, he is not God. He said Christ was crucified. He says, no, wama kataluhu wama salabuhu. He's not like you. He says God is the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You say, wala takulu thalasa. Don't say Trinity. Intahu khairul lakum. This is, stop it. It'll be better. You think anybody likes that? Anybody likes that? No. So you have to learn. Huh? Look, that is a fact. Whatever he's telling is wrong, wrong, wrong. But now you have to find ways and means of getting at that fellow. And the best way is, ask him, where did you get this? He says, it's in my book. So, so let's have a look, what does it say? If you can humble yourself, let us see, come on, let's have a look, man. Jesus is God? He said, yes. <clears throat> did he say he's God? He said, yes. So we hey, show me. In my lectures, in my debates, I'm telling the Christian, you show me anywhere in your Bible. Anywhere, in any version of the Bible where Jesus says, I'm God, I said, I'm prepared to accept him as God. If where Jesus says, worship me, I'm prepared to worship him. I said, I don't speak for these people. For you, I can't speak for you. I speak for myself. Show me. Finish. The guy is stunned. No argument. I said, you show me and I'll accept. You say, it's not there. I said, you're asking me. Your book, you show me. Where Jesus says, I'm God, I'm prepared to accept him. Where he says, worship me, I'm prepared to worship him. So in other words, now because I know his book, I can, I can offer him that. And now he's stumped in front of 2,000 people. The guy's stumped. He said, Christ died for my sins. He said, way, how? Shh. Talk to him. Allah says, kul ha, do burhan. Ask him for his burhan. Once he, Allah is telling you that he hasn't got a leg to stand upon. That's as if the judge is telling you, go to town with the fellow man, smash him up. Man, I know he's a liar, he's a liar, he's a liar. Go and make a mess of him. The judge is telling you. And you're not doing it. The judge is telling you, this guy is a liar, is a liar, is a fake, he's a fake. And you're doing nothing. You must go to town. Come, come man. Let us talk. Let us reason together. That is the strength. See, you're speaking from strength. Now come, come. I'm prepared to listen to you. What have you got? So that's what I'm showing you. Use his book. Allah says, Qul haatu burhanakum. Ask him for his burhan. He produced it, 11 different Arabic dialects. For you, Arabs, 11 different Arabic dialects. What excuse you got now? Huh? In 2,000 different languages. I just come from Sudan. I went to the Sudan. They have done 40 different Southern Sudanese language. Bible. They are at war with the Dinkas in the south. The Dinka, they got four different Dinka dialects. Bible in four different Dinka dialects. But now you haven't learned the art. That guy comes from 10,000 miles. He learns the language of the native and converts him and strengthens him. He uses the Bible as a textbook for teaching him literature. He's doing the job brainwashing the guy. And you're going to tell him, no, this is no good. This, it doesn't work. He's given it to you in your language. So we have to learn from the enemy to do the job. I don't know. I'm learning, from, I'm trying to learn from the enemy. Myself to invent the wheel is not for me. I haven't got that energy or the time to invent the wheel, a new wheel. You know wheel? It's invented man. Right. Whoever has it, take it and improve on that wheel. Don't start wanting to say, no, I'm going to make my own wheel. So I'm learning from the enemy. This is what he is doing. I said, right, if I do the same thing with my book, the Quran is there. There is a type of man, you talk about the Qur'an. There's a type of man, perverted transgressor, as soon as you open your mouth about the Qur'an, where did it come from? I said, no, it was revealed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Muhammad? How many wives did he have? <laughs> He's making a mockery. Right? He spread his religion at the point of the sword, he forced people, he slammed down people's throat. Fight, fight! No, don't do that. I said, learn this judo. You know, use the, the, the force, of your enemy and you see you go far better longer with less strength you don't need that amount of strength if you use the strength of your enemy this is next one myself um you said this book 
stand in the corner and smile would solve a lot of problems. Do you think Muslims who are being persecuted and executed in Algeria, Muslims in Burma, Muslims in Kashmir, in Palestine, need this book for the solution? Do you no. think that is the true no. solution? No. And also with that, to extend from no, that no, question, but inshallah... I had I had all your problems. Algeria, you have a problem. Kashmir, you have a problem. In India, we have a problem. In, in Palestine, we have a problem. Now, with this one pellet, with one this little pebble, you want to solve all the problems? No, I never claimed it. I said, this Jalut who's knocking at your door, this is how you can shut him up. This is how you can educate him. Because that guy is not going to wait till you solve all your problems. He's stealing your children in the meantime. In Algeria, he's stealing your children. In Kashmir, he's stealing your children. In Bangladesh, in Pakistan, in Indonesia, in Malaysia. All over the world here, yeah, man, it's a godsend opportunity for them to steal your children. Here, yeah. aren't they coming and knocking at your door? So now, how, to me, I'm only telling you how to deal with this Jalud, the American, the British, the French, whoever it is, who's trying to steal your children. I said, now, this is how, how to fight him. You tell me how you're going to solve the problem in Algeria? I said, brother, there are better people than me there, Algeria. About Palestine, there are better people than me to solve the problem of Palestine. I am not here as a God to tell you to solve all your problems. I am only telling you, this guy here is trying to steal your children. This is how you can defend yourself. A one day survival course. I want to give you survival course against this enemy. And when you have time, I'll also tell the Algerians I'm supposed to go there and tell them something. And tomorrow, go tell them something. For everybody, I have something. But now, at the right place. Here, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do in Algeria. What, what am I I'm wasting your time. And in Pakistan and Kashmir, what you must do? In Indonesia, what am I doing? I said, you, can you do this? Yeah, if you fit in, okay. If not, inshallah, we'll carry on with this work. But now, this is just for the moment. Here. In your environment, I say you need this, you need this. In America, you need this. Well, I, she wasn't, I didn't finish my question. I said, because for me, they haven't stolen our belief. They've stolen our system from us. That's what they've destroyed. But to take the question further, this book, you think saying it's, it's different for Indonesia and all those countries, but what about this book for our corrupt rulers who claim to be Muslims? La Fahad, Sabah, Husni Mubarak, Asad. Because they are the biggest oppressors of Muslims and implementing the deen. Is this a solution? Or is the Qur'an the solution? And fees to be lillah. That was my question really. So you see my brother, to me, I feel you are a better man to change Fahad than me. You are a better man to change Mubarak than me. I take it that you speak Arabic. No, no, no. no? well learn Arabic. You see, learn Arabic and I think you'll do a better job. You see, this is a world of specialization. You're specializing in something, aren't you? At school. What are you doing at present? I'm doing Arabic and politics. I'm learning Arabic. Right, there you are, in politics. You see, he's going into politics. That means you are equipping yourself, mashallah, for that field. I am not equipped. I was forced into this area, and in this area I have become an expert. So my expertise I'm now sharing with you. That's all, in this field. You tell me to solve all the world problems of the world. I said, no, I don't know, brother. I don't, I can't. No, I'm not asking you to find no, no. just, yeah. So I said, now, you say, this or that, I said, no, no, no. You be an expert in politics, you do that field. Somebody want to become a Sufi, want to fly in the air, okay. No, 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 no I'm serious. Look, no, no, if you can make people, right, you want to read people's minds, okay, you teach that science. I don't know. You say, look, first woman, I said, look, please leave me alone. This is all that I know. I'm showing you my weakness. In specialization, that's your weakness. If you are a specialist, you are a Right on top there, but in something else you know nothing about. You're a doctor, medical doctor. You can't change a fuse, man. Fuse. Your wife's fuse goes off, damn it all, you can't change the fuse. But now nice, look at that. He didn't learn about changing fuse. That carburetor in the motor car, he can't adjust that. And you're a doctor. B-A-L-L-B. What kind of a donkey is this? I said, no, no, look, that's his different field. You're a doctor. I am a doctor in this field. If I can be of help to you in this field, at the moment, this is all that I can do. I'm not going to take on the world because I, I know I'm committing suicide. I just want my soldiers. You are my soldiers. My soldiers, can my soldiers do this? That's all I'm going to give you. I won't tell you, do pray five times a day. That somebody else must tell you that. You know, make tahajjud and make ishraq and read subhanallah so many times. That's not my job. Me, I said, can you do this? So that you are my soldier to do this job. That's all. The rest of it, there's somebody else telling you your beard must be standard size. 
This Nasara clothes you are wearing, me too. He said, look, you must make Islamic clothes. That's not my line. I said, let the other guy do that. I'm not coming in his way. I won't come in your way. You know, when you talk politics, political science, what you know and what you understand and how to do things, I will follow you. I will follow you. See when you give the lead. But for the time being, this is all that I can do to help people. Next one, brother. Next one. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. As alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today there is a new holy trinity. Isn't the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit? Yes. It's capitalism, democracy and freedom. This is the new holy, uh, holy trinity that we see in the world. We, we talk about Christianity, but from my limited experience as somebody who's a student and who uh, actively partakes in the Islamic society, people don't care about Christianity. If you look in the world today, it isn't Christianity that's been implemented. It's capitalism, democracy or freedom. So I think the, I think the real problem that should be addressed are these uh, problems because as Muslims we have a stigma, we get upset when we hear a Muslim has become Christian. But there are many millions of Muslims who become Democrats who become secularists. We don't make a big deal about this. So I feel our energies will be better put to use if we tackle these problems. It's because it's capitalism today that's the dominant for force in the world today. This, my son, I agree with you 100%. You see, you are the fittest guy for the job. You want to pass the buck onto somebody else. These this ideas that you gave now about democracy and communism and all that, you are the fittest guy for that unholy trinity you talked about just now right but now you want to find somebody a scapegoat somebody to do the job you are a coward everybody i'm telling you now when you come with an idea any idea new idea you say, mr didat why don't you do this like this like that i said my son allah chose you for that if he inspired you <laughs> what he inspired you with he has chosen you to do the job but you coward you <laughs> please don't take offense i said you coward you look at sheikh jahran dahran why doesn't he do that ahmad didad why doesn't he do that you are a coward you are the right person to do the job but you want to shirk that responsibility say you want to pass it on to me i said please man i'm telling you my weakness i'm telling you i'm i, I have no knowledge about what you're talking not to confuse the issue with Christianity I'm, because no, Christianity Christian, is not the issue. Did any Christian come and knock at your door? No, Alhamdulillah. Where, where do you live? I live in London. Huh? I live in London. Where about in London? North London. Huh? North London. In, in an ivory tower? No. You got that right? This, look, you are, you are like the, the invisible man. Maybe the Christians can't see you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're scared of me. Maybe that, you see. So in other words, they know that this guy here is a greater devil than us, so he keeps them away from you. But our people, we know, they're harassing our people all over. All these books that I was showing you, see what they're doing. Christ gave the key in your hand. See this? Christian witness among Muslims. See this guy here? Better Muslim looking than most of us. Huh? K.K. Alawi is the key to us in search of assurance. He's a murtad, he wants to make you a murtad. I haven't shown you all. I have, what, what I've got here, you want to catch your daughters now. See this? You want to catch your daughters now. Hmm? She may never know a, a Christian. She may never meet a Christian. But you can write to her about God's love. Either you know what's going on around you or you don't. See, like an ostrich with a head in the sand. You don't know what I'm telling you. That the house is on fire. They're stealing our children. In Pakistan, they have perverted more Pakistanis into Christianity since independence than in the previous hundred years of British rule. They have perverted more Bangladeshis into Christianity since independence than the previous hundred years of British rule. They have perverted 15 million Indonesians into Christianity. And by the turn of the century, they want to make Indonesia a Christian nation. There are 35,000 full-time Christian missionaries occupied in Africa at the present moment. And we say we talk about democracy and this. Said, all that, you are an expert. I'm telling you that this devil here is stealing my children and I can't afford to lose one. And don't tell me that you don't know that we have lost a Muslim to Christianity. Otherwise, you are, you are absolutely blind. In, in, in your environment, have you ever known of a Muslim becoming a Christian or not? Right, okay. That, is that, are you satisfied? No. No. I'm happy about it. We but can't know afford, 10 who have become we democ can't, Democrats. They can't. Right. So now that you change them, you keep them, save all these people from becoming Democrats. That's your job. <laughs> My job is to save them from becoming Christians. I'm going to try to save you by giving you that 
survival course that inshallah you can become an adulterer, a drunkard and all that but you won't become a Christian. That is, that is the antidote I'm trying to give you, you know, an injection to save you from Christianity. He must give you an antidote against democratization. Okay, inshallah. Next one. Since can I, can I just come in here? We've only got 20 more minutes left, so I'd appeal to all of you to please stick to the topic. Ask a question that's relevant to what Chef Dilan has been speaking about. And I would also remind you that we have only 25 minutes left. Um, we'll finish before that. Okay, brother. The subject is Dawah in the UK, yeah? Now let's just look at what the predominant people in this country are. You, how many people attend the church? Very lucky if you get 2 to 3 percent of the whole country attending the church. They know that the, uh, Christianity is something dead, does not apply to life. Now what does? You ask anybody, whether it's in a grammar school, whether it's in a anywhere, workplace, what do they really thrive on? Freedom, democracy. For example, if they bring out a certain issue like homosexuals, on what basis would they justify it? They say, oh, the Bible says this. No! They will say what they got to in their own free time, in their own privacy, consenting adults, etc. is up to them. Freedom. They argue on the basis of freedom. Now, with this arg argument that, you know, we don't want people to become Christians, why are they becoming Christians in Pakistan? It's because the system applied allows the propagation of kufa concepts. They do not implement Islam. What is in Islam? They have a distinction between deen and dunya. Islam is not practical to them. If you implement Islam as a complete system, you will see the people coming to Islam. They will see the economic system from Islam. They will see all the justices. And I'm not shirking my responsibility. I'm only here for some support from the brothers to bring out the correct call of Islam as a complete political ideology. Now, I'm not shirking any of my responsibilities. And also, I'm not, I don't agree with the idea that that's your responsibility. I'm a Muslim. I have to pray. I have to do all my responsibilities. And one of them is to deliver the call to the people in the context of what Muhammad did. So that does not mean I just say, no, I'll be, uh, I'll be specializing in doing wudu and prayer, and I won't do the fasting. No, all of it. What is known from Islam by necessity? So what now? <laughs> so, I mean, what do you think of this idea? I'm telling you, you are studying a certain science. You are also with the other brother. I'm sure you are also studying political science. Well, no. the way, well, you are well informed about, you say, the Kufar system in Pakistan, Bangladesh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Egypt, everywhere there's a Kufar system. So you know the system. Now you are the right man to go and give them the injection against that system. Inoculate. No, no, please, don't pass the buck. And I'm don't, the no, I, look, I don't like I cowards. All of us, I don't all like. No, no, no. We you, give the call you, to the you people. Get people. Look, don't argue with me. You get the people, inspire the other young men like yourself, say, come on now, let us do an exercise. We'll have a debating society in which we're going to start, you know, debating about these things and inform the people. Go and deliver lectures. I'm sure Sheikh Rahman will allow you. I am ready. Then allow you. Come, right. Go and call the people. Right. Yes. Now, don't, no use. You. I'm telling you now that, look, Allah is telling you one third of the Quran is addressed to Jews and Christians. One third is addressed to Jews and Christians. Ya Ahlul Kitab, Ya Ahlul Kitab. Allah is crying in the Quran. He is crying in the Quran. It's a waqalu takhaz ar-Rahman walada. And they say that ar-Rahman, the merciful God has begotten a son. He said, laqad jittum shayyan idda. It's one of the most abominable assertion one can make. The worst swearing you can give Allah is this. At it the skies are ready to burst, and the earth to split asunder, and the mountains to fall down in utter ruin. And the awli rahmani walada. That they should say that our Rahman, the merciful God, has begotten a son. I want to know what are you doing about that when Allah is crying. When you go home and your mother says to you that you know this guy next door is calling me a whore, he called me a bitch, he called me a hooker. And you say, no, Ma, you see, this kufr system, you know, we must change the system. Is that what you're going to say to your Ma? No. no what are you going to say? You want to break that guy's jaw? Huh? The guy's calling your mother a hooker, mm -hmm. a whore. What do you want to do? You want to break his jaw? Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. Yes, me too. Well, I'm right. sure, yeah. So now, when Allah Baritala is crying in the Quran, I want to know what you're prepared to do about that. He's not crying about Pakistan being run by a kufr system. He's crying that people are swearing me. Swearing Allah and you said you love Allah more than anything else, you're not worried about that. You're worried about Pakistan and Bangladesh. I says to hell with them all. The thing is now Allah is crying in the Quran. I want to know what you're prepared to do about that. Yes. Come. Here, here, here. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's go. Alaikum. It seems to me that you are categorizing, you know, jobs in Islam. Like, this brother is good at hitting missionaries. This brother is good at, you know, doing this, this. You see, we have to deal with Islam as a whole. 
at the well, system. Look, okay, same sickness. let me no, no, look at this. let me finish. Your sickness. No, no, no. One, two, in all. Achi, achi. Look, wait, wait, wait. Please. What's your question on the subject I have spoken? Any question? No, no. no, no. You are telling me now all these other things I know. I want to know what is your question. Look, I spoke for more than an hour. Okay. Did you hear me? Yes, I hear. Right. So look, now look. I want to know is have you got a question? I'm sure the Christian is putting something to you for which you have no answer. No, no, no. Or you have all the answers. No, no. What I'm saying to you. No, no. I, but I don't want to hear what you want to say. I want you to answer me now. Do Christians ever come to you and ask you hmm, about Jesus Christ? He is your savior. And you had answer for that. Of course I have answer for everything. You, see, you have answer for everything? Yes, because when I have Islam, right? right? So now, Islam gives me the answer. Then, then you are all... I haven't come to my Please, point. Don't waste time. There's three more days. I have... Don't I have waste time. Look, I'm telling you now. Okay. You okay. have all the answers, so you're wasting time. Therefore, you want to take me on to other fields. If you haven't got an answer, then you ask me, Mr. Uncle, one, one this point. guy wants to know, why don't you people eat pig? When you eat the sheep and the goat and the cow, why don't you eat pig? And maybe he said, look man, I told him like that, but is there a better answer than that? Can I just make one point? Yeah? One question. What point do you want to make now? Okay, what I'm saying is, we're also dissociating ourselves from all the Muslim brothers. You're saying Indonesian brother is good for this, you know, Algerian brother is good for this. We have to deal with Muslim ummah as I one ummah. I don't know, I don't know. Okay? Okay. Jazakallah. Okay. I don't know. These are our educated lads. I'm telling you, just come and do this job here, and now they want to create another job for me. <laughs> well, yes. Yes, yes. In order to give da'wah to other people or to those kuffar, are we allowed to grade them about their their pagan festivals, like saying uh, Happy Christmas or Happy New Year? If if the answer is yes, I would like you to give me the the evidence from the Quran and Sunnah. No, I, I hope. I hope. You are, you are great, my son. You see, when I said that, Happy Christmas, Happy New Year, that doesn't mean, what is Christmas? It's, no, no, what is Christmas? It's pagan, it's pagan festival. What is Christmas? What does Christmas mean? It means the birth of Christ. <laughs> yeah, the birth right. of Christ. Birth of our Nabi we celebrate. Don't we? We don't celebrate. Yes. We don't. Maulun? No, we don't celebrate. That's Bid'a. This is Bida. We don't celebrate. The, you, you are neither the Prophet Muhammad in his life nor the companion has been celebrated. This. Uh, okay, okay. There are millions of Muslims, including myself. I, 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 I don't mind having a birthday celebration of the Prophet. You say Bida. I said, okay, my son. I'm not going to argue with you. I don't want to convert you. I don't want you to convert me. You see, I'm, I'm not here. But Quran and Sunnah will judge between us. Okay, leave it to Allah. That judgment leave no, it to Allah. No, I can leave it to Allah. <laughs> <laughs> Assalamu alaikum brother. So, brother, so many brothers they want to see you debate with the Pope. Have you ever got chance to debate with the Pope? No, the guy's too clever. He's too clever. <laughs> he doesn't want to. No. He doesn't want to. No, no, he, doesn't. he knows. See, he's, he's cleverer than most people. He's cleverer than Swagat. He's cleverer than Shorosh. He knows. He doesn't want to make a fool of himself. But you went to Mali no. and asked again. No. 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 You see, he's playing. It's a game he's playing. He's a, he's a master psychologist. He's a master psychologist. Wherever he goes, he said, we must have a dialogue with the Muslims. Who the His Holiness, the Pope. When he went to Kenya, he said that. When he went to Nigeria, he said that. When he went to Turkey, he said that. Now he said, no. He went to Senegal, he said that. Now what he's actually telling his people, go and convert the Muslims. But he doesn't use the word convert. Because if you use the word convert, you're going to react. Because when the priest comes along with his dog collar, you want to chase him away. Because he want to steal your children. But when he talks about dialogue, you can't say no. Because Allah is telling us to have a dialogue with him. So you can't say no. But you'll come out second best. Because you're not trained for that. You are not trained for that. His mission is not trained for that. So actually he's telling them, go and convert these people. They are already prepared to receive Christianity. They only need a gentle push. That's all. So that's actually what he's telling. So I caught him out. I said, right, Your Holiness, I'm prepared to come and have a dialogue with you. And it's a long story. It's a long story. The guy, shh, he fizzled off. No, he doesn't mean dialogue. What he's talking about, telling his people, go and convert the Muslims. They're already prepared. See, they already believe that Jesus is the Masih. Masih, Masih. They already believe in his miraculous birth. They already believe that he is the Messiah. They already believe that he gave life to the dead by God's permission. And he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. 
What more is required? Give him a gentle push, man. That's all. So that's what he's telling his people. It's a game he's playing. Right, my son? I, but I see the queue is no in, I see it's increasing. The queue. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. Because of the time, I think we can only be take two questions only, because we have one from the ladies also. Sorry, brother, why didn't the rest no more questions? Please, please, please. Sorry. Ladies, please, please. Assalamu Brother, you mentioned a book which you said is even more worse than Sulman Rushdie's. If we don't read books like these, because we don't want to publicize them, how will we know what is being printed about Islam? And if we don't know what is being printed, how can we fight against it? Thank you. You see, it's not everybody's job. I don't know whether you bought the Satanic Verses by Rushdie. Did you buy it? Why didn't you? Because then, what I'm trying is a rhetoric question. What? How many of you have bought Satanic Verses? Please put up your hands. How many of you got the Satanic Verses at home? Yeah? Look. In 200, 300 people, two persons got the satanic verses. Do you expect them all to buy satanic verses and read them, support that Hamis? You want to support him? Because every extra book that you buy, you're supporting the guy. Do you know that? You want to do that? No. This is for the experts. The experts have a right. Jamal Badawi, or Sheikh Zahran, or Ahmad Didat, or whoever in the community, come, uh, Kalim Siddiqui. These are the people, they must go out of the way to buy the book, Study the book and answer the book. It is not necessary for every Tom, Dick and Harry, everybody to buy the book. Damn it all, what are you going to do with that book? 500 and some 20 pages, how many pounds it costs you? What are you doing? You, you want to go and buy that book? You want to make that guy popular? No, so in other words, I'm telling you, look, this is what's going on. I'm in the field. I'm monitoring it for you. I said, look, now for that, let's do this. Don't start making a noise. The Reverend so-and-so, Maury, he wrote this book in which he says, our Nabi did Don't do that. What you're doing, you're propagating the shaitan. Then people want to know, anybody comes along with the book, you want to buy. Because you have already spoken about it. You want to do that? I don't want to do that. See, satanic verses, I had the right to read and tell you what is there, how to fight it. Kalim Siddiqui, you must buy the book, read it and tell you how to fight it. Right? But for each and every Muslim, to buy that book, you say, you want to know what you want to know. Shit! No, that's, so you want to go into shit yourself? No, no, this is the doctor's job. You know, wanting to put his finger all over the place to find out what's wrong with you. That's not my job and everybody's job. Leave it to the specialist. Okay, my son. Assalamu alaikum. I want to first start by making admission. I'm going to pass a buck to you. I'm going to pass one to you, but I'd like a buck of my own as well. Right. So, if you would give me the opportunity, I'd like to take up the offer and one day give a talk here. Inshallah. Is that okay? Marshall. I'll give you my name and address mm. afterwards. Because really, we all have a responsibility. And you yourself, since I was born, I used to hear about, well, when I grew older, one of the first things that brought me interest into Islam was some of your video cassettes. And I came to listen to you. Now, looking back now, you have a position that I don't enjoy that none of these brothers enjoy. You have a position of influence. People listen to you. And yes, in Britain, we should deal with the kafir. We should explain to them what's wrong. We should show them the truth. But also, many Muslims come to listen to you and look to you with expectation. And although ourselves and myself as a Muslim four years ago, I knew what is kafir. I knew him. I knew who is kafir. But I did not recognize kufr. That's something we must understand is a distinction. What do I mean? Someone can be Pakistani and he can be kafir. We know that. But someone can be Pakistani and he carries kufr. How? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Quran, Inna hazihi ummatan wahida. This your nation is one nation. In Islamic international law, forget UN, in Islamic international law, we are one nation, not Pakistani, not Malaysian, not one Indonesia. That's kuf sorry. We didn't give you the time to lecture. <laughs> this is <laughs> not now. Huh? Let me finish. He's taking the opportunity no, to no, lecture. No, Look, a time okay. chance will be given to you. Okay, inshallah, Ahmed, I just want to finish one thing, yes? Just one thing. You, uh, we won't be late for Muslim. Okay. The question is this now. Please, brother. Yes, I tell you. Brother, we want a question. You understand? All right, brother. Let him ask the question. We don't need no more. Shake that. That's enough. 
Okay, I'll ask you. Please, please, please. 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 I want to remove the monker. When someone insults my mother, I hurt. When someone insults the Prophet وسلم, I hurt. I want to remove the monker. Yes, I can go to Christian debate with him. But the, yeah, the question is this. How can I implement the hudud on Salman Rushdie? I can't do it myself. The magic word comes again. I need system to do this. I, my hands are tied without the system. This is something we must realize. Yeah. We are very sorry. That's just before we finish, we've got two questions from the sisters. Uh, the first sister says that I disagree, disagree with you about the age. Please, please. Yes. The first sister says I disagree with you about the age for your dawah. My husband is 35 and gives dawah every week. Yes, yes, I bring it forward. I, 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 she didn't hear that even Sheikh Zahran might say, "Look, I'm young in spirit, and I might have to concede." So she didn't hear. 35, 40. If you feel you are young and you can give battle, Nur alhamdulillah. Welcome. Yes. And the final question also from the sisters is how can we help our brothers and sisters to realize that the non-Muslims are brainwashing as graduates? Uh, can, I, can, I, can I comment on that? Yeah. You see, it is an incident happened with me. Last week, some people of Jehovah's Witness came to my flat, knocked at the door and said, Ah, we got a new, good news for you. Will you please let us in? So I let them in. I was very busy. They started to speak the same topic, the same idea, the same language. I know that they are programmed. So my way, it may be sometimes devilish way. So what I do, I take them out of the track and start to ask them, tell me then. A lady, one of them, said, uh, uh, you are a Muslim. I said, yes, I am a Muslim. She said, you know that the devil is working on the... Uh, the whole world is in trouble and this and that. I said, so what? She said, Allah, because she speaks Arabic, was speaking Arabic, Allah will come to rectify all that. I said, uh, who is Allah? I don't know him. Believe me, I never saw him. So who is Allah? Who is he? That one who was in the cross, that is I saw. Yes, if that one, was in the cross, if he couldn't help himself, how can he help me now? <laughs> so long time, why he left me this long, what I mean that I took him out, I took all of them out of the trap, and they couldn't argue anything. And they said to me, we are very sorry, we came to the wrong address. <laughs> I said, yes, that is emphasized, shows me definitely that they are programmed, they are brainwashed. When you take them out of that, nothing. They have nothing to say to you. So definitely they are brainwashed. And you see, you can't imagine the guts of these people to come to the mosque to preach Christianity in the mosque here. To the Imam. To the <laughs> they are coming to convert us to Christianity. See, the tension of the matter. You look at it oh, as a very simple thing. We have to look about the politics and it. But a person coming into your house, knocking your door, and trying to convert you to Christianity or to his system or to his religion, and you know how, you don't know how to answer that. So what our brother did is to equip us in that field. And I like to say to our brother, who says, oh, there's no uh, 
uh, segregation or there is no sect is here to work that work or to do that thing. That is the whole Quran says so. فَلَوْلَا نَفَرَ مِنْ كُلِّ طَائِقَةٍ مِنْهُمْ طَائِقٍ لِيَتَفَقَّهُوا فِي الدِّينِ وَلِيُنْذِرُوا قَوْمَهُمْ إِذَا رَجَعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَحْذَرُونَ It means someone must specialize in that area and one in that area and one in that area and that is the Holy Quran if we understand the Holy Quran properly that it tells us you have to specialize it you have to to, to, to divide the work you can't do all the work we can't do all the work you can't do I met someone and that is the language of the Holy Quran فَلَوْلَا نَفَرَ مِنْ كُلِّ فِرْقَةٍ مِنْهُمْ طَائِفَةٍ لِيَتَفَقَّهُوا فِي الدِّينِ Not everybody to go to study religion. No! Someone فَلَوْا مِنْ كُلِّ فِرْقَةٍ مِنْهُمْ طَائِفَةٍ لِيَتَفَقَّهُوا فِي الدِّينِ To learn religion and they come back to teach others who studied something else or who are specialized in some areas. So, so that is the Holy Quran tells us to do so. So we, I don't mean at all that we neglect the politics. We don't neglect our people. We don't neglect these talents. No. But there is areas, there is time, there is people to speak. That when we need, I, I had the idea one day to speak in the pulpit about the Muslims in Yugoslavia. But I'm waiting. Because I don't know all the facts. I invited one of the Yugoslavians from al to come to lecture us. If they have tape, we will show it here. After that, I can talk about that in the pulpit. But what I want to say to now, now, what can I say? Nothing. Because I have no idea. I have no full picture of it. So when I get it, I will do it. Now, we have our problem, immediate problem, the knocking, the problem knocking every door, coming to us, and they all say, a good news, we are bringing to you a good news. Those who oppose to say, our brother doesn't need at all to share, when he says, ah, happy Christmas or happy new year, he doesn't mean that you are sharing with them that, but, if you go to tell anybody, you can't afford your kitab. Do you imagine that he will accept you? You curse him and say, oh, take this book. What will you do? He will give you a slap, whatever may be you. But gently, nicely, and that is what? وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِهِ أَحْسَنْ Don't go to the man and say, you are a kafir. I want you to be a Muslim or to know what is the truth. You have to take this book whether you like it or not. What he will do with you? Does he accept you? That is it the language of the Holy Quran? It is the way of Rasulullah No. And our brother doesn't mean at all when he says happy Christmas or that you are happy about the Eid or you are sympathizing, sharing with them. No, no, no. He wants to say gently, with the nice words, talk to the people with the nice words. That is all. What is the harm in that? But anyhow, thank you for tolerating us, all of us, except my, especially myself. Thank you to tolerate that. And we have to thank our brother Ahmad Idad once more. Thank you and وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وأعنا على اجتنابه إنك على ما تشاء قدير and I have to apologize that we the imams of the center we are very sorry if we are not doing the good job for Islamic da'wah in Britain. I'm very sorry. I declare that we are, we, we, we didn't do our business or our job properly as it should be. And I have to admit that and to admit that 
is to try to put our house right and again and again we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahumma ansurna ala a'da'ina Allahumma a'idna ala al-qawm al-zalimin Allahumma la tu'akhidna bima fa'ala al-sukara'u minna innaka ala ma tashaw kadir wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa shakar Allahu lakum jami'a